So put away your calculators and let's see how much you actually understand about multiplication because this problem right here is nothing more than a multiplication problem. So we're taking this number and we're going to square it. All right, so no calculators, but uh, let's take a look at our answers because we do have a multiple choice question here. And our first uh, option is A, which is the square root of 10. And then we have B, which is 40. C is nine minus four times the square root of five. And D is negative 100. All right, so go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. All right, so we're gonna be using one of the most critical properties of multiplication to solve this problem, okay? So think about how much you actually know about multiplication. So we're gonna take this and multiply it by itself. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is C, which is nine minus four times the square root of five. Now, if you did not use a calculator and you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus. So congratulations. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I thought I knew how to multiply like six times three is 18. Well, that is a good start. And the property that we're going to be using here is actually uh, something that we can look at uh, from a very basic math standpoint. In other words, here, this looks pretty complex, but I'm gonna teach you something that uh, you may not have known about multiplication, which is a critical, critical property, not only in arithmetic, but in algebra. But uh, before I get into that, you know, if you're looking at this problem and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was totally lost here. Well, always take a guess, especially if you are a math student, never leave a multiple choice or any question at that blank. So some of you might be like, well, I don't know here. I got a square root of five, a two. Maybe I need to multiply this number times that. So the square root of 10 looks like a pretty good guess. Well, that's a good guess, but unfortunately that is wrong. So the correct answer here is C. All right, so how do we get this answer? Well, I'm gonna explain this all in just one second. But uh, first, we're gonna get into a very interesting uh, property of multiplication. Matter of fact, this may be my favorite property out of all of mathematics. Now, I know that's kind of weird sounding, but uh, of course, as somebody who loves math, you know, we need all these properties of mathematics. But uh, this property here is such a cool property, and it's called the distributive property. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, uh, the distributive property. I'm not gonna write that out, I'm just kind of saying it. And if you've heard of the, uh, the distributive property, then well, that is fantastic. I'm gonna give you a few examples of uh, that property right now. So in algebra, if I have two times x plus one, what uh, is this equal to? Well, we use something, again, called the distributive property. We're gonna take this two and multiply it by x, so that's gonna be two x plus this two times this one, so two times one is two. So this thing right here is equal to this. Now, hopefully most of you are like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know that property. Well, that is fantastic. But this property is all about multiplication and really it's a cool way to multiply uh, values, okay? Now you can multiply algebraic expressions or numbers in a different way. So let me go ahead and give you some examples here. So let's take two times 10. So in multiplication uh, or in arithmetic or in mathematics in general, when I wanna uh, write multiplication, I could do it this way, two times 10. I can use this little dot as an operator or I could say two times 10 this way or I can say 10 times two this way. So we're gonna use this notation right here uh, with the parentheses. So if I have a number outside of the parentheses, this means multiplication. All right, so let's take a look at two times 10. Now, two times 10 is what? Well, of course it is 20. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the distributive property. So the distributive property means or is the following, and I'm kind of giving you an informal explanation of the actual distributive property from a mathematical standpoint, because you know that's a kind of a mouthful. I don't wanna give you the technical definition. Matter of fact, I'll give it to you right now. It's A plus B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. All right, so that is the distributive property, but uh, you know that's a little bit uh, too complicated for the purposes of what I'm trying to emphasize. So let's take a look at this simple example. Okay, so the distributive property means that when we're multiplying a number times another number, we could take one of the numbers or even both of the numbers and break this number up into a sum or difference. 
All right, so let's think of 10 as something else. So maybe we'll think of 10 as like eight plus two. All right, so uh, 10, you can have all different sorts of combinations of like five plus five, eight plus two, seven plus three. It doesn't make a difference because it will always work. So now we're gonna go ahead and use the distributive property. Now what that means is that we're going to distribute this number on the outside of the parentheses to the sum and difference. So two times eight is what? Well, two times eight is 16, plus we have to uh, take this two and also multiply it by all the other numbers within the parentheses. So two times two is four, 16 plus four, of course, is 20, which is our answer. All right, so you can see how uh, interesting this property is. We could take 10 and break it up in any way and still get back to the correct answer. Now this works with uh, differences as well. So for example, I could be like, well, maybe uh, 12 minus two is a way that I wanna express 10. So two times 12 minus two is what? Well, let's go ahead and use the distributive property. So two times 12 is what? Well, that's 24 minus two times two, which of course is four. So 24 minus four is 20. All right, so we can kind of do any uh, sort of combinations of numbers uh, to uh, make this work out. Matter of fact, it doesn't even have to be two numbers. Let me show you another example. So let's uh, take two and let's think of 10 as maybe uh, four plus four plus two. All right, so four plus four is eight plus two, of course is 10. So let's go ahead and do, use the, uh, the distributive property here. So two times four is what? Well, that's eight. Then that's gonna be plus this other two times four, which of course is eight, plus two times two, which of course is four. All right, so eight plus eight is 16. 16 plus four is 20. Okay, so hopefully you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's pretty cool. But uh, what does that have to do with this problem right here? Well, I'm getting to that. Now let's take a look at another example. How about nine times nine? All right, so nine times nine or nine squared is 81. But now I'm gonna show you something really, really cool about the distributive property. And I'm gonna take this, uh, these nines here and I'm gonna break it up this way. So I wanna take this nine and I'm gonna go eight plus one, that's nine. And then this nine will do it the same way, eight plus one, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and use the distributive property to get the right answer, which of course is going to be 81. But now we're gonna do something a bit different because we have two things, okay? We're, we don't have one number outside of this sum. In other words, we don't have two times a plus one. We have a plus one times a plus one. Okay, now in math, for those of you that have studied algebra, what I'm gonna be showing you here is something called the FOIL method which stands for first, outer, inner, last. But uh, basically, I don't like to use that acronym because um, although there's nothing wrong with the FOIL method, the way I like to uh, teach this is the following. Okay, so we're gonna use the distributive property, but the way this is gonna work is we're gonna start with this first number right here, okay? And we're gonna distribute to this thing over here just as if this problem was this, uh, or written like this, eight times a plus one. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just multiply just like we did in those previous examples. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so eight times eight is what? Well, eight times eight is 64 plus eight times one is what? That is eight. Now we're done with this eight right here and we multiplied by everything over here, but we're not done. So the way this works, when you have more than one thing that we're multiplying using the distributive property, we go over to the next number, all right? So we're done with this eight, so now we have to work on this one right here, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna distribute this one. So this is gonna be one times eight is what? Well, one times eight is eight, and we're gonna add up uh, the results of all these uh, products, and then one times one, of course, is one. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, this is gonna be 64, plus 16, so 64 plus eight plus eight is 16. That of course is 80 plus one gets us to 81. All right, so here eight plus one of course is nine and nine times nine is 81. But uh, this property, the distributive property is critically important in algebra. Now that you know a thing or two about the distributive property, we can use it to actually solve this problem. If you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher 
that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we're gonna take this thing right here and multiply it by itself. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have the square root of five minus two times the square root of five minus two. Now, because we have this um, a square root of five and minus two, we can't combine these numbers. In other words, we don't have a situation like eight plus one where we can add this up. Like eight plus one, of course, is nine. It will make our life easier if we add up what's inside of the parentheses. But here we cannot add uh, or we cannot subtract the square root of five minus two. In other words, we can't just uh, write an answer here. It's not like the square root of three. So this is as simple as this number gets without a calculator. Now, of course, I can get some decimal values here uh, with my calculator, but we're not using a calculator. But what we can he uh, do here, excuse me, is use the distributor property to simplify this expression. Okay, so let's go and do that right now. So we're gonna have the square root of five times the square root of five, and the square root of five times the square root of five is equal to the square root of five times five. So when you're multiplying uh, square roots, what you're going to do is multiply the numbers underneath the square root, and you're gonna put that over one big square root. So the square root of um, five times five, of course, is the square root of 25 or five. Okay, so the square root of five times the square root of five is equal to five. Okay, now we're gonna take the square root of five and multiply it by this negative two. Now we do have to consider this sign right here. And by the way, in mathematics, these two things right here are an expression where you have two things that you can't add or subtract is called a binomial. So we're taking this binomial and we're multiplying it by uh, itself, or it's a binomial times a binomial. Okay, so we have the square root of five times negative two. That's gonna be equal to negative two times the square root of five. We're just simply gonna take this number and multiply it by that. So we write the answer this way. Now we have the negative, we have another negative two times the square root of five. So that is gonna be a negative two times the square root of five again. And then we're almost done. We have one more term to uh, do here. So that's gonna be negative two times negative two, which of course is a positive four. All right, so let's go ahead and just review the distributive property. So I started off with this number, okay? So I multiplied this number times this and this, but we weren't done, right? So after uh, multiplying by, or distributing by the square root of five, I moved over to negative two and I did the same thing. Okay, so now I can add all these terms up. So a negative two uh, square root of five plus another negative two square root of five is gonna be a negative four, okay? Square root of Five. That's how many square, root, square roots of fives I have. I have a negative two and a, a negative two here, so that's negative uh, four square root of five. And then, of course, I have five plus four, which is nine. So nine minus uh, four times the square root of five is the correct answer. All right, now this property here, uh, basically, when you learn it in algebra, is called the FOIL method, okay? But really, it's the distributive property. So, for example, if I had x plus two and I was multiplying by x plus three, well, I would use uh, the FOIL method. This stands for first, outer, inner, last. So the first is right here, right? So the first times the first, okay, these are the first terms of each of these binomials is what? Well, that's x squared. Now the outer terms are gonna be what? These are the outers. So this is gonna be x plus three. So that's gonna be plus three x. But you can see here, this is simply following the pattern of the distributive property. All right, so we're done with the x, and so now we're gonna move uh, over to the two. So two times x, this is our inner. So that's gonna be plus two x. And then our last terms of the uh, binomials are gonna be two and three, which of course is six. So here we have x squared plus three x plus two x is five x plus six. Okay, so we covered a lot about multiplication. And uh, really, I wanted to use this um, uh, opportunity or this problem as uh, you know a nice segue uh, into really reviewing the distributive property. Okay, it's such a, a critically important 
property in mathematics, and uh, I think it's one of the coolest uh, properties because you can just do so many multiplication problems in all sorts of crazy ways, right? So, for example, 6 times 3, we could be like, all right, 6 times 3, how can I multiply 6 times 3? Well, maybe you can go like 6 times, we can think of this 3 as like 2 plus 1, so 6 times 2 is what? Well, that's 12 plus 6 uh, times 1, of course, that's 6, and 12 plus 6 is 18. All right, so hopefully this uh, property makes sense. And by the way, uh, if you need additional help with uh, algebra or, you know, uh, any sort of level of mathematics, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. But if this particular video helps you out, well, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.